All right, so Fred, you had the chance to spend time on both the Anthem and the Division Beta. Uh, for transparency's sake, you did both on the PS4? Uh, yes, I did both on the PS4. All right, so let's start off with just the Surface stuff. Uh, in regards to graphics, sound, just presentation as a whole, what were your impressions of Anthem? So Anthem is beautiful. Um, in every aspect, it is a gorgeous game. Uh, whether you're talking about lighting or environment settings or the characters or even any of the set pieces, like everything is great in that aspect. Um, if we talk about like UI, and UI is, is definitely part of the graphical system, it is ugly. Like it looks like it's dated. It's not organized well. Um, on Anthem, it was just it was definitely a detracting uh, factor. But uh, the game itself is gorgeous. Like it's it runs smoothly and beautifully. And that was really great. Obviously, one of the big draws of Anthem is the um, the travel, the flight, uh, the verticality. How did you find like draw distance, pop ins, any of that? Were they issues at all? So draw distance isn't an issue anymore. Um, it seems that obviously if it's if it's on PC, you're going to have a, a greater draw distance, um, and you're going to be able to do those settings and mess with those settings. Um, but on PS4, it's obviously very limited uh, in terms of what it can do because it's not a it's it's not something where you can change those type of settings. Um, so no, I didn't have any any issues with those at all. All right, and uh, now also kind of in regards to graphics, um, enemy designs, armor. Um, not necessarily graphical quality, but uh, artistic direction. How did you like, um, you know, just kind of the feel of all of the enemies, the uh, NPCs that you might be talking to, uh, the different weapons, effects, and armors that you might pick up? The idea behind the javelins, as they call them, which is your class that you pick. Um, the... The, they, they were made like Iron Man suits, if you want to think like that, where you could change whatever you wanted to do. You could change not the... It wasn't your overall look. Like, they had some really cool skins that you can put out on them, dependent on what javelin you picked. But overall, you would definitely get the same uh, ideal look that you want your javelin to be, but in a very minimalistic way. So you can't, you can't, in Destiny, you could definitely change a lot about your look, um, where it seems, and, and this is just from what I've played so far, I don't think that the customization options are as in-depth, but obviously the whole game isn't out, so we don't know, but it just seems that the, you can change the skin, which allows you to change colors and change very, um, varying pieces of it, where in Destiny it was, yeah, you had a shader, so it changed the color, but it seemed like your look got changed tremendously depending on the piece of armor that you picked up. But I, like, I, I didn't play with a lot of the other javelins, I played with uh, two of them, and that was it, but so far it just seems that they will go in a direction where they will want people to dress up as they want to dress up, but it wasn't shown in the VIP demo as much as it could have been. Now, you brought up the comparison to Destiny, and, and that's actually kind of one of the points that I was kind of trying to guide you towards. Uh, I, one of the big criticisms of Destiny was how few enemy types there were, and how a lot of them were variations of previous ones that were just kind of altered a little bit. Um, you know, how was the enemy design in this? Did you feel like you were just seeing the same things over and over again? Um, no. Uh, absolutely not, but that's only because you could do a few uh, expeditions and then one like main big. It was it was light to strike in Destiny, but you you the stronghold go and you, f yeah yeah the stronghold. So you fight through a bunch of uh, enemies and then you get to a final boss. Um, so of that stronghold, you fought different types of enemies. Um, but overall, I just I still feel like it's going to be that type of game where, it, in the demo, it felt like let's go to this area, fight this group of people, kill them. Go to this area, fight this group of people, and kill them. And it was very much the same types of enemies. Um, and I even I ran into on the side missions, the expeditions, and the stronghold. I ended up running into very similar enemies. But I just think that's how the world works, and that's how it is. But it can become very mundane and very. I would say boring after a while to run into those same enemies, which Destiny had that issue of because they didn't seem to have creative 
like that impactful creative design behind bringing something new to the table. Anthem, once again, full game isn't out, and it's it's obviously just a demo. But I, I felt I fell into the same traps of, oh yeah, I saw I saw these guys before. Yeah, killed them. Oh, look at these guys again. Oh, these guys again, and it was that type of thing. All right, well, let's jump over to the division then, which, uh, you know, based on the first division, it's mostly urban landscapes, which really does kind of minimize the graphic variety. Um, and of course, it's not the same kind of organic living world as Anthem, where you can have some different climates. Uh, what were your thoughts on the graphics and the look of Division 2's demo? Division 2's graphics for their, for their beta, um, if you've played Division 1, you're playing the same, you're seeing the same idea. You're, there's no... There's no graphical upgrade. Um, it's it's basically as if they took whatever they they upgraded in the last parts of the division, the original one, and it's just placed in Division Two. Um, for the environments and the set pieces and everything that's going on, yeah, it's 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 a hot mess. No, but not no not in a negative way. It's like the the environments are just full of garbage, and the place has been totally like nobody cares anymore and it's a very cool feel um and it's it's interesting to see the difference between what they're doing in division two to division one where division one did have this population of people walking around and uh very much to the degree of they were still okay to be out there where it seems like here people are just like i don't give a shit like the world doesn't matter to me anymore and there's these people out here that are scaring the shit out of us and we have to have these places where we're going to be safe which division one did they had the safe houses right so uh, they had the same type of thing in division two i don't need random npc humans walking around like in division one asking me for a candy bar so that they can give me nothing um, and they don't they don't do that in division <laughs> two so division two doesn't have so far as what i've i've run into is you are actually more out there helping these people fight so these all these npcs and everybody out there is actually helping you fight the other uh like the enemies instead of just standing around being like oh my god help me they're actually they have guns and weapons okay now that's another thing obviously that's going to be a concern division it's i mean set in more reality as you can with a video game about that so it's pretty much just humans which you know the first one did have that issue of all of the enemies were just humans wearing different armor so did you find a little bit of fatigue in the enemy design in this of course of course a hundred percent uh you do you will always feel that fatigue in most games um that you're running into the same enemies over and over and over again um yeah, I, I do definitely feel that Division 2, with this beta, showcases the, the same enemies because they're just, you're running and you're getting humans, and if these humans are have purple health, then they have a little bit of shield. If they are, if they have the yellow on them, then they obviously are a, an elite enemy, and it's like, you know this from the colors, but you're like, these guys are still humans, and I'm not really changing my tactic on how to hurt them, other than now I know they have a shield, so I may have to use a certain ability or a skill to dwindle that down. But overall, the whole game is going to be like that, right? And if you like that, great, that's awesome. That's, that's something that you're really going to dig in this. But if you're not into the, as we were talking about previously with Anthem, if Anthem has the whole verticality and the idea that there's a sci-fi world out there for you to have the variation in terms of gameplay, Division 2 is your looter shooter, or your shooter looter, whatever you want to call it. Like, it is just basically shoot, kill, collect, upgrade, kill, and you're going to have the same thing over and over and over again. All right, so which game do you give the nod to in regards to uh, graphic presentation, audio uh, presentation? Graphics go to Anthem, um, without a doubt. Um, they've done a spectacular job there. Um, Division 2 is Division 1. It's a step. It's a step behind. I don't think they did anything special. Um, so yeah, uh, Anthem for sure in that aspect. Audio, I give to Division 2 um, because I've, I've always loved the audio there, whether it's the, the music or the sound effects or anything like that. I, with the demo, the VIP demo, the audio just was so buggy and there was a lot of issues that happened with it clipping in and clipping out and like a lot of fading and hollow sounds and sometimes you'd be missing audio altogether they did a really poor job on the audio on ps4 
Um, on PC, not a lot of people seem to run into these audio problems, but on PS4, it was a huge problem. All right, so let's move on to um, controls, because obviously it has to be talked about. One of the biggest selling points for Anthem is the movement, the flight in particular. Um, so it really, that comes down to control. Um, and then we're talking about two looter shooter games. So of course we want to talk about um, feedback, um, as well as of course, uh, I think uh, the verticality in, in one game or the other. So why don't we start with Division on this one? So the Division 2, uh, in a control aspect, um, is, is exactly what you would picture it to be. Your third-person shooter, uh, very slick with the, with the ability to turn quickly if you want your sensitivity up. Everything is great in terms of what you need to do, especially if you're used to it in the first Division. It's the exact same replication of what it is. So it just it transfers right over. Uh, if you've played a third-person shooter before, you're going to be very comfortable with how it works. Um, very easy to pick up items, very easy to um, like aim aim at an enemy. Like As I said, if anybody's even playing Fortnite right now, uh, it, it's just like, it's basically a replication of anything that is, is a massive game that's a third person uh, shooter in any way, shape, or form. So like I, I had no issues with uh, Division 2 in terms of control, and it's, it's very easy because there isn't that ver verticality. So it's just like a, a running around uh, on the ground, climbing ladders, uh, shooting enemies, picking up their loot, upgrading your stuff. Like it's, it's very simple, and they, they explain it very well in the beta. That is a little unfortunate just because I thought that the first one could have used a little bit more with, you know, rooftops and the underground, which you got, but were very sparse and um, very seldom actually needed beyond maybe the odd mission or the odd collectible. Um, right. Right, but let, and also talk about, like, when you're talking about verticality and controls and everything like that, don't forget that the Division does have the ability to get the upper ground on enemies, because there are some levels that you have to be up top and shooting down on enemies. So there is that verticality, but you don't have the fast movement that you would in other games if you were to have that free flow control. Okay, and then uh, let's move on to Anthem then, because obviously one of the most talked about things coming out of their uh, weekend was the flight, um, which many people actually praise the movement in that game above all else. Right. Uh, in Anthem, with the controls, with the verticality, especially because of the flight, you're going to, right off the bat, have issues. You're going to, you're going to struggle with the flight path, you're going to struggle getting your... because there isn't much in terms of instructions for the VIP demo that gets you going in terms of hey this is this is how you do this perfectly this is how you have to you have to double jump and then click in the left stick and then you'll start flying and a lot of people ran into the problem of well i don't like how sensitive it is or i don't like how um when i go up and i go down i have to change the controls they have a ton this is the good thing about anthem and its controls is that you can go into the options and they have tons of options for you to change but that can be overwhelming for a a general player somebody who's just coming in and wants to play the game they can actually not like how the controls are by default try to go in and mess things up and really ruin their experience and have to go back to default and just live with what the default is um, i think that they're going to very much try to balance that out and make it easier to change for people. Because even for myself and a bunch of people that I played the VIP demo with, they said that the the flight controls were one of the issues that took some getting used to. Yeah, but when you got used to it, how did it feel? Uh, once you got used to it, it, it was second nature. It was obviously that, but you could tell, like even as I was getting used to it, I was like, I do need to change some of these uh, controls for their sensitivity and change how, how the flight patterns work. So it was interesting. All right, now real quick, tell me, uh, guns in both of them, how did they feel? What was the feedback light like, uh, the gravity, uh, the weightiness of them? How, like. It's a looter shooter. You're going to spend the majority of your time shooting. How did shooting feel? How did aiming feel in the two? Um, starting with Anthem, great. Like I, I think the combat was one of my favorite things in Anthem. Uh, it was very easy to pick up and play. Um, tons of options for weapons. Uh, the loot in general, like you pick after each uh, expedition, you pick up a ton of loot, like tons. So there's, there's, you can go anywhere from having a simple. 
uh, assault rifle all the way up to your sniper rifle all the way up to shotguns um, which is the basic thing it's not there's no like it's there's no crazy sci-fi weapons that I dealt with at the moment but Anthem also has the ability to use magic in a way um, so there are javelins that have other abilities on top of that so they have like they have their, their, these special abilities for each javelin that allow you to use it. And then you can pick up different abilities and they're like loot as well. So as you're picking up different loot, you get to change your, you get to change your, um, your special abilities on, on, on the, uh, on the javelin screen. So on the, on the forge. So when you go to the forge, you can change whatever you need. And it's, it's a really cool idea because then you can level up these abilities. So even if you get a, a special ability right at the beginning and it's low level, if you really like it, you can level it up so that it is something that you want to keep. Uh, it does take some time, but as you go, you pick up uh, better leveled special abilities as well. I thought the combat was smooth. I thought it was great. Uh, I had no problems, especially with uh, being um, vertical and shooting. Like it was cool that the enemies would um, that the enemies would hurt you um, while you were up in the air and it wasn't some kind of advantage for you so even if you were in the air and trying to hide behind something they still had the ability to get to you so that was really well done um, switching over to the division two uh, it's 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 your it's your looter shooter uh, once again it's your you have your basic weapons you have your your snipers your assaults your LMGs um, y you have every gun that you could possibly think of that was in division one but this is a more realistic game, so you're not going to have any of those abilities that are, are sci-fi. So you're not going to have anything with magic or lasers or, or, or stuff like that. And, and maybe I'm saying that just from the beta or my experience with Division 1, but they may introduce stuff uh, down the road. They may introduce things that are, are well beyond what we, we think is going to be in this game. But being the looter shooter, you get a ton of loot, you get a ton of weapons, you got to upgrade them all the time. and. Um, yeah, it's 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 very much the same experience that you would get in any kind of uh, game of that type. So overall, which game do you think just feels a little bit more fluid or fun to pick up the controller and play? Which one are you giving the nod to? It's definitely the nod goes to Division Two for people who want to pick up and play uh, that type of game. Even after you've gotten past the learning curve in Anthem. Yep. Even after the learning curve, the, the for the controls, uh, the 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 simplistic way that the Division Two represents its controls or presents, sorry, not represents, so presents the controls is is a great way for people to get into that type of a third person shooter. All right. So uh, next question then. Uh, in regards to story, which is obviously. Not the biggest component of a looter shooter, because once you get through the campaign, it's mostly just your uh, loot-based activities. But um, how did you feel about the presentation of the story, uh, voice acting, dialogue, uh, any sort of cutscenes you might have seen between the two? Uh, why don't you start with Anthem, since it has the Bioware name behind it? So, in Anthem, I was actually very disappointed with the um, with the VIP demo, because it didn't represent it sticks you right in the middle of the game and the story is brought to you in first person instead of third person so your main hub is you walking very slowly through a first person view um, and trying to get to places and characters and wherever you need to do in this in this marketplace so the story representation right off the bat was you didn't care about it as much because you just wanted to get to the place the guy talked and you're like well I don't really know why I'm here or what I'm doing because you stuck me in the middle of the story so you'll start talking to this guy you start you start figuring out a few things and they will tell you bits and pieces you'll go and do an expedition come back talk to another person do another expedition come back and all this time that when you come back to the first person uh, marketplace is the idea of okay well I, I know that you needed this thing and this the, I know that you you wanted the ability to do this but do I care not really because I don't know where the origins of this come from well let's so give them the I'm benefit thinking. of the doubt on that because right. it is the origin right. and it's it's not the full experience what was the quality how was the scripting any voice acting did you have any dialogue choices like wh where was it on a quality level 
So I didn't. Ha you didn't have any dialogue choices on the main story branch uh, with the with the with the main stuff that you were doing. But when you went to other characters, you did have uh, you did have dialogue choices. But it was it was always just pick one or the other. But they didn't seem to matter. So it was just you having a conversation. You picked one. You picked the other. They had a reaction to what you said, but you just continued on your way. So really the bioware way of especially in mass effect where if you did something it actually had repercussions that are actually had an effect uh in some way shape or form it didn't seem to have that kind of impact so far um when you were making these choices in the anthem demo all right and what about the division what did you get for story cutscenes, presentation voice acting any of those aspects in that one yeah so in the division two um it was very linear, um, especially for story. So the ability to find your base of operations, know why this was happening, um, talk to certain people inside of the base of operations, and then move to your next objective and go to that objective, which is a, like a safe, a safe house. So you go to the safe house and you see what they're building there and they want your help. So because they wanted your help, you, so it's, it's, it's very division one-ish where it's, it's you going from a place to place to place and then it opens and expands more. So like you get your side missions from there, you get, uh, they need certain items. So you go and you're doing your fetch quests. Um, they also have, um, you, you're going and doing your missions to go fight a boss uh, because the boss has a specific thing. Like they've, they've taken somebody, so you need to get them back just like, just like the original game. Um, the presentation was really well done in, in the division two so far. Um, but I wouldn't say that it is anything out of the ordinary. Uh, it doesn't seem like it's doing anything that it hasn't done before. And I can definitely see people getting turned off by the fact that, um, they're just going to run to the places, ignore any of the dialogue, ignore any of the story, and just want to get the best loot with the highest possible gear score, um, with anything that they want, right? So... All right, so may maybe it's a little bit tough to answer because that's something that really does need the final product to um, determine. But based on just an initial first impression, which one made you more excited to see, you know, what unfolds in the story? Uh, Division 2. Uh, Division 2 gave me that feeling of, especially with the, the world that they built for it, um, with it, it's so as I said, it's so dirty. It's so I want to know. I want to know why this world became the way that it is. I want to know why the environments are so packed with garbage all the way up the side of buildings. Like why, why have they decided that they just don't give a shit anymore? It's really interesting to me on there. Um, for Anthem, like they just didn't present it in the right way for me. It was more like, uh, okay, I just want to do my expeditions. When I got out into the world, I was like, well, like, you didn't really build this in an exciting way. It's all just, like, like, green trees and grass, and there's enemies plotted here and there, and I'm just flying around and going from place to place and beating enemies. Which, if you think about it, in Division 2, it's you just going from place to place and beating enemies, but they seem to make the world, like, you look at it, and you're like, oh my god, look at what, like, how do people live like this? Like, I'm so interested in knowing why this is happening in this world. But I don't think Anthem did that in the, in the demo, and I think that's something that I hope that they will improve on when the game comes out. Well, I think that's an underrated part of storytelling is the world-building aspect. I mean, look at games like the Souls series where you have to discover the lore yourself. Um, so that's another point for Division. Right. All right, so this is the big one, Fred. Uh, looter shooters are made to be played for hundreds and hundreds of hours. Uh, let's talk about what you did and what fun you had. Uh, pick whatever one you want and start. Okay, so in, in Anthem, I, I got to experience a little bit of story um, being jumped right into the middle of it. I got to experience some dialogue choices. Uh, you got to experience every javelin uh, eventually. So you started out as, as one javelin, but you got to experience them all um, if, if you continued to play it uh, all the way through and get to the high, your highest level. Um, some, As I said, some story was represented um, you did some expeditions out in their little world that they've created for you. Um, you went and you uh, found camps of enemies that you defeated, 
came back from that expedition after you've killed a certain amount of enemies, uh, got all this loot, uh, got to fit, go to the forge and fix up whatever you wanted for your javelin. So if you had better weapons, if you had um, better abilities, whatever suited you for what you needed for your next expedition. But every time in the middle of each expedition, you got a little bit more story because you had brought something back for the person uh, that needed that information or that item um, and then you just continued to talk to a few people but of course the issue for that experience was not really caring about the story yet because just trying to get as much out of the demo as you could um, and then you got to do a stronghold which was basically the a replica of what a strike would be in Destiny, where you go from spot to spot to spot killing enemies, and then there might be a puzzle integrated in the middle of it somewhere, and then at the end, towards the end of it, you would fight a big boss. And, and actually, Anthem's boss was very, very well done. Like, I really enjoyed the experience of fighting alongside two of my other friends and taking down this boss, and it was really engaging how they, how they interrupted your flow of play for combat and I, I've, I've, I've touted this game as having extremely good combat and I liked it and I liked the verticality and I like how we all played in a different style, a different way to take down this big boss so I think that's something that Anthem really has going for it uh, in terms of how it's going to make it fun is as long as they can hold on to that element of engagement in terms of uh, enemy design so if they have bosses that are just phenomenal and they need different mechanics to actually take it down i think that's going to do wonders for anthem if they can keep it fresh and keep that content coming i do as anybody knows in today's day and age think it's going to run dry really fast unless the end game content really continues to hike up but i think that a lot of people have learned their lesson especially watching how destiny 2 um, failed in that manner of not giving people enough to do so so that's my take on anthem all right more importantly more importantly yeah. before you jump back to the division was mm -hmm. it fun <clears throat> i think the combat was fun i do not think that my overall experience in the game uh was fun I don't, I think I got turned off by a lot of the bugs, a lot of the UI issues. Um, I think that there was a lot in that game that actually detracted me from um, from wanting to play more at times, especially when you run into the issues of, and this this isn't even gameplay, like there was a lot of stuff on the outside that were, you were like, okay, I'm just fed up with this, I don't want to do it. But if everything was perfect in the game, and if everything just ran smoothly, I think it would be a lot of fun. I just... I definitely think that it's going to be up to the developers to make sure that the game stays fresh. All right, so jump over to the Division 2 then. So the Division 2 is a lot of fun. It is your it is your typical looter shooter um, where you, from my experience, you went and had interactions with uh, important people that told you bits of storyline that I was actually attached to. Now maybe that's a personal thing, but I do feel that the environment set pieces really lent a helping hand to how I felt about the game and how I felt about the beta in particular. So I had a ton of fun learning about the world at the beginning because they do let you have story pieces of why this is here and what's happening and what you need to do and why these people are suffering and what you need to do to help them out and i really felt engrossed in in the in the world and it's something that i want to experience i'm not just saying this because i absolutely loved the first division uh even if it dried up i'm just it was it was fun to just jump back in and explore that world. And I think that's something that Division 2 has going for it, is the ability to look around and be like, what's over there? Oh, what's over there? What's over there? And I think that's that's a, that's a good thing for them. Uh, obviously, these are not the final product. They're not representative of what we're actually going to get. Um, they're, but beyond the actual testing purposes for the developer as well as the player base, it's meant to be marketing. So. After everything we've gone over, uh, gun to your head, you can only pick one. What are you buying day one? 
day one buy for me is division two um i do think that um especially with everything that i've seen with on on twitter and on their blogs and everything they're saying about endgame i think that this is a game especially with a 50 hour guaranteed campaign um with all the when you get to end game the missions just continue and the loot just continues you can continue to upgrade and the ability of having different skill sets once you hit max level so you become a different class um once you hit that end end game portion and they'll just continue they're saying they're just going to continue to throw stuff out all the content is free um for the first year in the division two i believe all the content is also free in anthem um for the for the first bit but i mean everything that they're saying about division two right now is more of division one towards the end development cycle of what division one was and more so they learned from what they did first and just like they are just giving the fans what they want every question is being answered they're being they're being very open about every single element of this game and it looks like it's something that is going to be around for quite a while Hey, did you like that video? If you did, be sure to let us know by clicking the like button and leaving a comment. If you want to be first in line for any new content, be sure to subscribe to our channel and then hit up our Facebook page. The link's in the description below to see what's coming up next.